Hello class, my name is Daniel Valdez and this presentation is about Wireless Heart Superframe presented by me and Jeff Ciudad. Wireless Heart is a meshed network that monitors and controls different sensors and applications in the system. A mesh network is a local network topology in which the nodes connect directly and dynamically to as many other nodes as possible and cooperate with one another to efficiently route data from and to clients. The standard of communication was initiated in 2004 by 37 heart communication foundation companies. It was approved and introduced into the market by the Heart Foundation in 2007 for the purpose of being able to monitor all the appliances in use, look at the health of the object, and be able to send the information or da data over to the next nearest sensor. Heart is actually an acronym for Highway Addressable Remote Transducer Protocol. This protocol supports 2.4 GHz ISM band and IEEE 802.15.4. This technology is based on the Dust Network's TSMP technology. HART is a hybrid analog digital industrial auto open protocol. Its most notable advantage is that it can communicate over legacy four, between 4 to 20 milliamps analog instrumentation current loops. Superframe is a T1 framing that replaced the original framing of ones and zeros. It was widely deployed with the D4 channel bank. This frame is 192 bits long and terminated with 193rd bit, the framing bit, which is used to find the end of the frame. Each channel sends two bits and of call supervision data during each super frame using robbed bit signaling during frame 6 and 12 of the super frame. The wireless heart network user layer has a form of backwards compatibility that allows for newer devices and gateways to be manufactured in the future and be able to be installed on the current network and still work. The protocol works on 2.4 GHz frequency in a predetermined slot of 10 milliseconds. The network layer of wireless heart has two routing paths named as source routing and graph routing. Source routing, including a single path, is less reliable and is only used for troubleshooting. While graph routing is widely used in the wireless heart due to its redundant paths. Series of the time slots form a super frame for the data transfer and wireless heart makes possible the hopping between communication channels in order to avoid interference and reduce multipath fading effect. As from the picture displayed, there is an entire network of devices and sensors that are all able to collect their own data and then be able to pass it up towards the gateway which is then passed onto the network and application host. These devices work in sync due to if one of them fails or runs out of power, that data is sent to the next nearest device and then uploaded through the gateway. Wireless Heart is a self-healing and self-diagnosing network that is based on mesh technology. Wireless Heart 
has been designed primarily to cover a very wide range of needs in the process industry, from the simple supervision to the control in closed loops. If a sensor or application runs out of power in the network, the data will either be sent to the next nearest sensor, or if an access point is closer, it will be sent there. This form of functionality and modularity with the heart network provides that it is very safe in the case of a failure in one of these devices. Having more devices in this network will actually ensure that the network will run smoother since it has more devices to have as a backup to send the data to. Using some packet sniffers makes it possible to be able to capture and analyze packets captured through a serial port in a heart network. As you can see, here is a simple chart that compares different serial packet sniffers and shows the capability of some sniffers that others don't have. Although Portmon is free and AGG and Comport charge, none of them use packet insertion or are able to export the packet logs. The only packet sniffer that is able to insert packets and export the logs is not free of charge. XCTU is able to insert packets but not export the logs. And Serialmon is able to export the logs but not use packet insertion. The best for being able to have most of the functionality and using both packet insertion and log exporting are XCTU, Ultima Serial Port Monitor, and Serialmon. This picture is an example of how a serial port sniffer is able to capture packets from a heart network. The first picture shows how a sniffer is able to intercept packets and be able to capture them from the serial port. In these cases, it is a USB serial port and the device that the packets are being collected from is a XDM2510H transceiver. The second picture is how a sniffer is able to insert packets into the USB serial and then sent to one of the devices in the heart network. This is used to try to see if the device will send a response signal. This response packet is then used to ensure everything is functioning properly and that the device is able to receive and distribute packets. XCTU is a free of charge multi-platform packet sniffer. It is able to manage and configure multiple RF devices, even through radio waves. It is able to generate API frames and then decode those API frames into frame values. It has API and AT consoles to be able to communicate with radio devices. This packet sniffer also allows for a packet insertion through the serial to detect if the devices will be able to receive this packet and be able to send a response packet back. Ultima Serial Port Monitor is a sniffer that is able to capture and record packets captured through a serial port. Elta, Ultima is able to log the port data and settings and save the data that has been found for later. Ultima is able to watch two different ports 
and monitor them at one time. It offers multiple ways of viewing the data that has been found and can filter through multiple types of packets. Eltima can emulate sending packets through a serial port towards one of the devices. Since it can view multiple ports, it can compare the data that has been extracted from those ports. These three devices are some of the main components of a heart network and are essentially needed to make a heart network function and be sustainable. The adapter uses radio signals and other forms of connectivity to be able to communicate with other devices and gateways. The instrument uses radio waves to send and receive the data and measurements it observes in the environment. It uses and needs very little power to operate. The gateway uses an access point radio to send and receive these signals and then uses this data and sends it to the network manager and host. Hi, this is Jeff Sudad. I am continuing off where Daniel Valdez ended. And now we're going to talk about the wireless heart super frame architecture. One of the most important parts about wireless heart super frame is that it contains five layers. It has the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, the transport layer, and the application layer. As you can see in the graph, it shows all of those layers as well as what, what features it has through heart that are corresponded to each of those layers, such as command oriented and perfined data types being corresponding to the application layer, so on and so forth. So first of all, let's go to the physical layer. The physical layer is known for creating radio characteristics. It is one of the, one of the layers that handles the messaging modules, and then it transfers those messages onto the queue, and then sends those messages over back to the network layer. Through this physical layer, the wireless heart channels range from 11 to 26. So what is the data link layer? With the data link layer, wireless heart is able to create a time slot that goes up to 10 milliseconds. When there's a channel that is in the data link layer, it uses the formula, the act, which is the actual channel, which equals the channel's offset plus the ASN times the modulus of the number of channels. The super frame within, char uh, within wireless heart contains a series of steps, and it mostly consists of interfaces, timers, and link schedulers. The interfaces basically describes the amount of services provided by the physical layer, whereas the timer is one of the most important modules in the data link layer, as that helps synchronize all the data within the 10 milliseconds. So what is a network and transport layer? Well, these two layers, basically they work together to help multiple networks communicate with each other. They go through two different types of routing. The first one is graph routing. Graph routing has paths that basically allow networks to communicate with each other through a series of nodes. Source routing sends packets from one network to another, and it continues to send messages and other data to multiple networks until it reaches the, the exact network that it's targeting and the network that it's trying to send the information and the messages to. to the application layer. 
This is the last layer of the wireless heart superframe architecture. In this application, it collects all the messages and responses from one network and finally executes those responses and messages to the other network. For this, in this layer, the application layer basically separates and filters out the messages, extracts them from the network, and finally executes different commands to ensure that they end up on the other network. As you can see in the graph, the application layer is often command-oriented and uses predefined data types as well as different application procedures. One of the key features about Wireless Heart Superframe is its use of timer interrupts. It is a very strict requirement for Wireless Heart Superframe to time when it transfers messages from one network to another. As stated before, it needs 10 milliseconds in order to, pr in order to do so. As you can see in the formula on the right, that formula basically separates how many intervals are needed within those 10 milliseconds in order to send certain data in order for the other network on the other side to receive those messages. Because without this formula, it would be very difficult to know when a message is being sent or how the wireless heart superframe is going to send those messages. Next, we come to synchronization. Synchronization basically allows the time, the 10 milliseconds, to be split into separate intervals in order for the network to send messages properly without messing up or without ruining any of the connectivity. Simply put, it needs synchronization in order to know when the nodes should be doing their commands so that the messages are sent from one network to another network without any errors or disruptions. The formula that you see here show is the formula that determines when the node starts their command and when the message that they are told to start arrives. Thanks to this formula, this is what prevents nodes from making any errors or mistakes and allows them to work in syndication and without causing any problems or any errors that can cause connectivity issues or any issues within the wireless heart superframe. And finally, we come to the network management of a wireless heart superframe. Through the wireless heart, there's, there's a few functions on how the network management works. It is done through a graph that describes paths from, from network devices or they use a broadcast graph from one gateway downward to each device. Through a network management, there are many communication schedules. These schedules are basically what allows and organizes how the network does its job. And the graph that you see in the left shows the topology of a wireless heart network. This topology shows how the wireless heart network is organized and how it is able to do its tasks. The graph that you see on the left basically summarizes the burst mode data rate for the devices. You could see the device ID for each and their burst mode rate. Their burst mode rate shows how they can able to, how they are able to um, send the messages in many different times or send messages rapidly within a few seconds. These are our references. These are the sources that we have found 
to put together this presentation. Here are also some more references that we have found. Thank you for watching, and we hope you found this presentation helpful.